televised sports production has been the same for a long time, but now it's changing. Meet IQ Sports Producer from IQ Video Solutions. With the power of artificial intelligence, professional productions can now be created without an on-site camera crew and thus at a fraction of the cost. The AI has a high level of automation. It tracks both the ball and the players. It overlays the scoreboard and graphics and it creates highlights and replays. High quality, easy and affordable sports production has never been so easy. Tap into new possibilities with IQ Sports Producer from IQ Video Solutions. Well, hello everybody and welcome to our uh, webinar this afternoon here. Uh, my name is Mark Andrews. I'm Global Sales Manager here at uh, Mobile Viewpoint slash uh, IQ Video Solutions. Uh, and we're really here to talk about uh, the IQ Sports Production Platform, but with a particular emphasis on the management platform, Link Matrix. So uh, by way of introduction, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Baudivine. Would you like to say hello? Hello, my name is Baudivine. I'm Pre-Sales Support Manager at Mobile Viewpoint and IQ Video Solutions. And I'll be showing you our Link Matrix today. Fantastic. So just by way of housekeeping, everyone's on mute, uh, as you probably know, so feel free to make as much noise as you like. But as we go on, as, as you know, I'm sure everybody knows this by now in Zoom, there's a Q&A box, just write your questions in there. Um, and at the end, we'll then uh, address all the questions, either in the Q&A box or the chat, it doesn't matter. Um, and then, yes, so by, by format, I will give a quick presentation. Uh, literally just a few minutes just to give an overview of the IQ sports production platform uh, a little bit about mobile viewpoint as well uh, just not familiar with us and then I'll hand over to Baudivine who will sort of get a bit more deep you know, into the tech really so <clears throat> the thing I'm going to do is uh, share my screen there we go so who are we mobile viewpoint um as a company, Mobile Viewpoint, for the last 10 years, have really been innovators in live streaming, uh, particularly for the broadcast world and the production world, where they need to live stream from a remote location. So perhaps in the past before that, people would use satellite trucks and that sort of thing. So Mobile Viewpoint really innovated in a cellular bonded encoding platform. So a little device, uh, you can plug your camera in and live stream within a few seconds back to a... Uh, so a broadcast center, which is sort of much lower cost. And over the last 10 years, it's, it's really innovated. Um, and, and right now we're looking at 5G, 4K remote productions, all through a sort of a, a, a you know, a mobile encoding device. Um, however, sort of in the last sort of 18 months, Mobile Viewpoint have also been developing some AI platforms. Uh, and we've got a couple of AI platforms uh, available right now. One is vPilot. So this is a, an automated uh, studio system uh, with cameras. Um, and the second is the IQ sports production platform, which is really what we're gonna go into more detail today. But what they both have in common is that they don't require a camera people or an on-site director. So everything's done remotely. And in fact, what the, what the AI is doing is taking that place of the camera person. Now, the whole idea behind this technology is not we're not trying to put camera people out of a job. Really, what we're trying to do is enable those types of productions that in the past were cost prohibitive. So, for example, if you're looking at sports, so the tier three, tier four league games, uh, the youth games, um, maybe some of the women's sports that couldn't sadly uh, afford the luxury of having the resource to send a camera production crew to site. However, with AI technology, all of a sudden, we can enable that. We can now do these productions professionally at a much lower cost. Now, some of you might be familiar with Mobile Viewpoint and going, who are IQ Video Solutions? So what we've decided to do in the last sort of couple of months, actually, we announced it in December, is that we would take the AI products and basically give it its own branding. Um, the AI is a bit of a different proposition from the encoder market. 
So we decided, okay, what we're gonna do is take our IQ products and put them under the IQ Video Solutions banner. Still the same company, ultimately still mobile viewpoint, but it's just, just different branding. So on that note, what we have done now is we've got some uh, new websites, both for mobile viewpoint, but we've also created a website for IQ Video Solutions. And again, with its own social media channels, own Facebook, own Twitter, and that sort of stuff. So if you are interested in our AI technology, then I'd really encourage you to sort of sign up to some of our social media channels. On the website, you can sign up for newsletters. So every month we'll be doing newsletters. And obviously the plan is to keep going with these webinars. And we try and make them as educational as possible. So I'm gonna drill a little bit just into IQ SP, the sports production platform. I don't know if you've seen the video. There's our X cam. So I've got one here actually. So this is a camera that we've developed ourselves here at Mobile Viewpoint. Uh, and it's a panoramic camera. Um, and the reason we've developed our own is really from a broadcast perspective is they obviously, the broadcasters, they are very strict in terms of quality. They don't want drop frames, but they also want high frame rate. We want some good zooming capability and that sort of stuff. So we are aiming at the broadcasters, but we're also aiming for people who want to web stream as well. And there's sort of more budget, lower cost productions they want to do as well. So though I'm showing the X cam here, we actually have a range of cameras that we support, including a lower cost uh, surveillance camera. Again, it's a panoramic camera. The camera itself, it's four 4K cameras. And the whole idea is that the camera, it sits above the field of play. And each, ca each camera basically captures a segment of the pitch. And then what we're doing as part of our software is that we stitch together and effectively de-warp this whole image. Now, we capture everything. So the camera is capturing the whole field of play. So here we've got a, a soccer uh, pitch, but it could be sort of any ball game, it could be indoor sports, and we are actually supporting a whole range of, of, of different sort of ball games. Um, and I'll come on to that a little bit later. But the whole idea with the panoramic view is that now the AI is actually follows the action of the ball. So it's an algorithm which follows the action of players uh, and the ball. And we create this virtual software cutout of the panoramic image. And because the camera is in such high resolution, actually, though the cutout is only a partial part of the whole thing, actually, it's still in full high definition. So the resolution is still very good. Um, and with our own camera as well, because of the higher resolution, we can actually create some really good zoomed in shots as well without losing some of that definition, which is sort of important for the broadcasters. One of our big differentiators as well is the effect. We can actually do multiple streams. So you may decide, okay, you know what? I'm gonna let the AI take care of everything. I wanna, I have to manage a hundred games at the same time. I, I, I don't have the time or the resource to be involved. And that's fine. So just let the AI do everything. And as Baudivine will show a little bit later, the AI can basically take care of complete production. You don't even have to be there. But you do have the option of actually creating multiple streams. So if you want to create other virtual cutouts, you can do that as well. So maybe you, you want to create one of the goals or, or parts of the pitch. It's totally up to you. And then you can live stream all these uh, different uh, streams and maybe the other end remix or whatever, you can then basically mix them yourself if you want to do that. So the, the options are there. Also on site, what we have is the AI server, which we're showing there. Um, typically we have it on site only because many of the stadiums or sports clubs we go to, they don't have a strong internet capability. If you think about this camera, it's in high resolution. It needs a lot of bandwidth. Um, so if you're going to host the AI server in the cloud, which you can do, you just need to have that bandwidth availability. So that's just something for consideration. So the server, the AI server, typically it's local, but there is the option if you have enough bandwidth of actually hosting it uh, in the cloud. So in terms of uh, a, a, a workflow, we have the camera, which we talked about typically sits six to eight meters above the field of play, higher the better. Uh, that then communicates over ethernet to the AI server, again, local or hosted. But what we also need in the workflow stream is a debonding server. Now, this could be at the receiving end, if you are a broadcaster and you want an SDI output, you can then have this the output. It can also create an IP stream. So if you're doing an OTT platform 
or social media, whatever, it, it, you have that option of creating an IP stream. But actually not everybody wants to have that debonding server at the receiving location. So as a company, we also offer that debonding as a cloud service as well under a subscription. So again, that negates the need for having that debonding server. You can effectively just have it in the cloud. And again, cloud of will show how we do that using Link Matrix. So Link Matrix is managing all this in the cloud. It's just a standard browser. It's a portal interface that we provide. And we actually provide it free of charge. It's not a subscription for Link Matrix itself. We only charge a subscription really for the debonding and some of the add-on services that we provide. So Link Matrix is there. It can manage all the devices. But what you also want to create is this professional production. So what we're going to show really with Link Matrix, it's not just about managing the devices. It's also about scheduling the games, managing the streams. We can actually have multi cameras. I've talked about the panoramic camera in the middle. We also have an option for side cameras. So we can do a multi camera production. And again, all controlled through AI. But for professional production, maybe you want to show the replays, you want to show highlights, you want the scoreboard. You might want to do graphical overlays, sponsorships, that sort of stuff. Um, and we also have something called Clipper, which allows you to basically clip live streams and send them to social media, wherever you, you want to push them, really. There's a couple of things at the bottom there. I've just put in brackets. It's more sort of futuristic for us. But when I say future, the plan is actually to deliver it um, this quarter. So one thing is commentary at the moment you have to do at the receiving end or at the uh, camera end. But people are asking, oh, we'd like to do commentary actually through Link Matrix. So that's something we're going to be adding. But also for training, people want to use an analytical platform. They want to do analytics for the training. So again, we're working with a partner here in the Netherlands who's going to provide an analytics layer that you can use it for training. Uh, and an OTT platform. So one of the things we say is, look, it's your media. It's your live stream. You're free to do what you want with it. We have no claim. Over your, over your media um, and you're free to play at wherever you like. But we also do get asked occasionally, oh, you know, where can I play this out? What we need is a, a subscription based service where we can play it on an OTT platform and monetize our content. You know, can you recommend something? So now we're also offering our own OTT platform, which we'll call uh, uh, your team stream. So this is an opportunity where actually, if you're not playing it on your OTT platform and you want to play it on ours, we can do that. And then people can sign in and subscribe, whatever. And it, again, it's just a way of monetizing your content. So anyway, on that note, um, to go back. So that's the summary. Again, if you've got questions, feel free to put them in the Q&A box as we go along. But what I'm going to do now, I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Baudervine, and he'll be doing the Link Matrix demo. So over to you, Baudervine. You are on mute, by the way. Yes, I noticed. Thank you very much, Mark. Um, I hope you can all see my screen now. I'm going to show you Link Matrix. This is the first screen you normally uh, get into. And on our left hand side, we have a list of clients. In this case, it's a single IQ. And on the right hand side, we have our decoders and, if necessary, social media outlets. Um, you can also link in social media accounts from there to go live straight to YouTube, for example. So what can you do here? Um, well, for, first of all, you can preview the streams. So just click the little play buttons. As you can see, I currently got uh, multiple streams going. Um, I have three of them plus the panorama. But I can also remote control the device from here. So I can just click on it and click the go to management button, enter a password, and I'm inside the unit. So now I can see it's streaming, roughly doing well between 13 and 16 megabits currently. <clears throat> uh, there are lots of options that I can change in here. Um, for example, I can choose the sport, although we'll be doing that through Link Matrix, which is uh, a lot easier, of course. But I can set the number of cutouts here and control them by setting their resolution and their bitrate. 
Some of these, as you can see, have a stream local option. This is used for analytics. Mostly uh, analytics is uh, located locally on the box. Uh, so we can also stream locally to analytics software. As you can see, we also support side cams. We have none configured for this one, for this demo. Um, and you can also record the raw input stream from the camera and play that back later as if it's live. So all the stitching, all the AI is done again. Uh, we use this mainly for training the AI when we encounter a new sport. Uh, we require a few recordings of games and then we can train the AI to uh, respond correctly to that sport. So once configured, you'll be dealing mostly with uh, Link Matrix. Um, so let's go have a look. First off, if we want to stream, um, we want to do that with an overlay. So I'm going to go to my overlays and show you how to create one. We first upload the graphics we need. In this case, I have a logo and I have a scoreboard. So now I'll create a new overlay. And now I can just drag in those graphics, select them, resize them any way I want, and put them wherever I want. So I'll put that one in the top right. And I'll put the scoreboard in. But of course, where does the scoreboard need to go? Because we need to map the characters on it. Well, for that, you can enable the scoreboard area and there you can see the box where the scoreboard needs to go. So I can just drag it there, resize it, and I'm done. I can rename it and press save. So now I have my overlay ready for broadcast. What I can also do, as Mark pointed out, we can uh, stream multiple streams. Um, so I can first look at the current camera positions. I already scheduled a game. I need to because the unit needs to be running to show videos here. I'm not using camera position four, so I'm gonna disable it. But as you can see, these are all color marked. The first one is red, which is the AI. You cannot control that one. But I can control number two and three. As you can see, I've set the box, the blue box here. So I'm seeing the goal here. And the green one I made larger and focused it on the right half of the field. I could use that, for example, for later analysis by the coach. I could have done that for the blue one as well to have one of the left-hand side, one of the right-hand side. And these get recorded on the server so I can later come in with Clipper and select the parts that I like um, and download them. For example, to show them um, to players or discuss them with other coaches um, or even from the live game, uh, I can post them on my Twitter account, for example. So that we do with Clipper. Clipper is a very simple editor that lives in Link Matrix. You just select your client and select a stream. So let me just select one and it'll start to play. Now there will be these little dots here that tell you what happens at that point. I can just drag it in and drag that one in. And I can see the length of the clip here. This is a 20 second clip. I wanna add it. So now I've added it here. Now I can either name the clip and download it, but I can also add in other parts of this stream. So let's say I have another part here that I want to add as well. I can simply add that to this one and if I now export this, I get one clip with a full length of 52 seconds. 
So these two clips are concatenated into one clip. So this would allow you to create your own uh, highlight, if you will. So we've now checked the camera positions. We've created the overlay. So now it's time to schedule a game. I've already scheduled one that is running currently, so I'll schedule one for tomorrow. And let's say it starts at half past one. The duration is two and a half hours. And let's call it Mark's game. Now I can select the client because obviously I can have multiple IQs. We would like you to have multiple IQs, of course. Um, so I'll select the client and I can select the type. Usually that would be MD5, which is a whole combination of a lot of settings. In this case, I'll be choosing recording because I don't have a live camera connected to this unit. And I'll select the source. These are all previous recordings. I'll select the last one. And I will also select the type of sport. In this case, I'll choose handball. Now, of course, we've created the overlay for a reason, so I want to use it as well. Um, and if I don't remember which one, I can simply preview the overlay by um, hovering over this little eye icon. I'll select my uh, true and trusted MVP TV. And then I'll go into storyboard. So here I can enter the team names, which in this case, I don't know the team names. So I'm gonna name them for the color they have. So red and yellow. I can also upload a logo and select that. And I can add in some automation. What I can do here is for example, decide that when the highlight starts, it needs to play a clip. I don't have a clip uploaded here, but it could be um, a moving graphic, for example. This is what you see in a lot of broadcasts when, for example, a goal has been scored. You see the graphic, then you see the replay, you see another graphic, and then you get back to the live game. So that's what you can do here by adding these types of actions. So I can have another one when the highlight ends. I could also, for example, maybe I have a message from my sponsor or uh, a long clip containing commercials. I could say when the break starts, play those commercials. And when the break ends, I first want to show uh, the graphic of my TV station, for example, again, or something else. So there are a lot of actions that you can put in here. Next, under advanced, I first get an overview of what I've done so far, which looks fine to me. And then I can go into highlighter. The highlighter is basically the AI recognizing what is happening on the field. For example, it detects a goal and then it will mark that timestamp uh, with the fact that there was a goal. Um, so it's the creation of, of metadata about the game. Um, it's created automatically by default. You can disable that if you want to. You can also play them automatically. What that does is that, let's say a goal has been detected by the AI, and then it can automatically start playing the replay of that goal. And when you combine that with the timeline where we can say, when highlight starts, play this graphic, then you get a fully automated um, broadcast of your IQ game where it detects the action automatically, does replays automatically, and shows all the graphics you wanted in between. Then we have the referee settings. Um, obviously, the referee is the one who decides when the game starts. He is also the one who decides if uh, a goal was actually a goal or if maybe it was offside or a foul somewhere. Um, we can choose several. The highlighter is the default. It basically does nothing, but we can set it to OCR or manual. 
For those not familiar with OCR, it is a camera that we can point to a scoreboard and then map the characters from that scoreboard and analyze them. So we can see the actual game time, we can see the actual score and update the virtual scoreboard on top of your um, overlay accordingly. In this example, I don't have OCR, so I'm gonna choose manual, which will allow me to later on, which I'll show you in a moment, um, control the time and score of the game manually. So now all my settings are done. The only thing I still need to do is where does it go? So I'm going to stream destinations. There are a couple of things that I can choose here on the left-hand side. These are the ones that are available and these have been scheduled. Currently, none of them have been scheduled. So I can either have my own RTMP server in here and use that as an output I can have my YouTube account linked and have the link matrix create the event for you on YouTube and automatically switch the video to it as well. Or if you have one of our SDI decoders, you can choose one of those as well, which is what I'm gonna do for this, to, for this demo. Once you drag one of the available outputs uh, to here, you can select it and choose the settings for the output. This is an SDI output and of course, well, at least usually in uh, Europe, we do an output of 1080i50. So that's what I'm selecting here. And I can also change the video bitrate and the audio bitrate. And then save that. If I click the little plus, it'll add the event, event and save it. So now tomorrow at half past one, this event will start automatically. It will automatically be transcoded, the overlay will be added, and it will be output on my SDI decoder. For now, I already have a game scheduled, which is this one. And we're gonna have a look and see if we can control the scoreboard. So this is the scoreboard control area where as you see, I, it already selected the correct sport in this case. And well, this game has already started, but we're just gonna pretend it just started. So I'm gonna say it's the first half. I'm gonna start the game time. So now the game time is running here and it also starts running there. So as the game progresses, progresses we might see the red ones score goals. So I'm gonna plus one the reds but I also like yellow, so I'm giving them one as well. So we have an equal score now, and let's say something interesting happens right about now, almost. Just gonna add in a highlight. So now I get this one here, replay zero. If I open this, I can actually see that preview, that highlight again. And I might have chosen the wrong moment or I need to tweak it a little or it's too long. Let's say it's too long. So I'm just going to take the end off and save that out. So now I have the same replay, but it's shorter and I can play it like so. And there goes my browser. There's my highlight, but my preview is gone. Which, oh, there it is again. Okay, that's good. Um, so I can play the highlight by pressing this play button and then it'll start to play the highlight as you can see here. So we had the file there. Let's say that's what we were interested in. And then it returns to our live game. I can also tag these with goal, with a foul, with an interesting position. So this is usually used for coaches, like, okay, this was an interesting situation. Our defenders were responding in a certain way. They should have done something differently. Um, I wanna tag that. And this is just something interesting. You just wanna flag it like, okay, we need to look at that later on. 
And you can just keep adding those highlights as you go. So that's IQ Sports in a very quick overview. Um, I don't think I forgot anything. No, I think, I think that was good. I mean, just to reiterate, you did show in the storyboard that you can top and tail the highlights of the video thing. We, we didn't show it here, but that, that is possible. Bad of I mentioned that. But also, Bad of in Clipper, um, I always quite like that little icon which shows all the players on the pitch and the, and the ball moving. I think could yes, you're right. I forgot about that one. Uh, but that's indeed, well, it's at, le at the very least fun to watch. Yes. Uh, so if we select a stream here, it starts playing. And if you look at this field, it's currently showing a, a football field. That's something that still needs to be uh, changed for, for different sports. But you see all these. I'm not sure if it's, can you really see that through? Yeah, we can see that. Okay. Well, you see the balls and all the little players. These will be from different teams in the future. They currently are all the same color. But as I move around here, I'll do it slowly so it might be more apparent you see where the players are at any given time you can also see where the ball is at any given time so that will well it's 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 helpful because a coach might be looking for that situation where he knows where roughly where all the players were but he wasn't sure where it was exactly it was not tagged there was no highlight created so we can't see it that way uh, he can come in here and just go over this and see, okay, where were the players at that time? So yeah, this is all encapsulated within uh, the video stream as a separate metadata stream uh, where we save the position of all the players and the ball. Yeah, fantastic. All right, Badavan, well, that, that's very good. Now, if people do have questions, I notice we do have some questions in the Q&A, which I'll do in a session, but uh, in, a, in a second. But so if you've got, um, if you've got any specific questions, now is the time to put them in. Um, in terms of sports that we're supporting, when, when Badervine scheduled the game, they, there's a pull down menu and he picked a particular sport. So we're doing a whole range of different sports, both indoors and outdoor sports. You know, the indoors will be sort of basketball, um, floorball, which is kind of a hockey uh, type game. Also, we're doing ice hockey. And as you can imagine, in ice hockey, there's a puck that moves very, very fast and it's quite small. But again, the AI is able to track that. Um, so, and and we're, we're sort of developing new games all the time, out, outdoor sports, obviously American football, soccer, rugby, uh, and a range of other sports as well. And, and traditionally, we, we started off just doing ball games. But we're sort of also evolving that as well in terms of what we're looking at. So recently we developed the system to do horse jumping and horse dressage in a sort of a, a menage with, with the horses. So we sort of train the system on what is a horse and then we train it to basically follow the horse. Um, and then we've also asked by the Netherlands uh, training, uh, the Olympic training scheme for the cycling, you know, can, they, can, we, can we follow a bike in the velodrome going around? And again, We've trained the system now to be able to track bikes going around a velodrome and also multiple bikes. So as they go over the start line, a new bike takes over and we're able to track that as well. And we're kind of constantly evolving as a company. We really do have innovation in our heart. So if there's particular sports that, you, that you're interested in and projects that you have, you know, though we may not support it today, you know, please talk to us. There's always a possibility we, we can look into that, you know, if there's a good enough business case for doing that. Um, Anyway, on that note, let me look at the Q&A box that we have. Um, let me start with Isabel. Hello, Isabel. Uh, hi, can you confirm the bandwidth needed by the IQX cam and Hikvision camera when running the IQ server in the cloud? So the Hikvision is our sort of security camera that we use, sort of sort of the light, that's sort of more the entry level type thing. Um, so the Hikvision has, a, has a, short, uh, a lower bandwidth. So typically you need about 80 megabits a second from the camera to the server. The Hikvision's higher resolution, it's normally around about 100 megabits per second between the, the camera and the, and the server. Uh, second question, uh, when using multiple cameras? Well, just sorry. to, you're forgetting the IQX cam. Uh, you're only answering the Hikvision question now, which is uh, correct, by the way. Uh, but the IQX does a, a lot higher um, uh, bit rate. 
So it does around, I think it was 50 megabits um, four times. So you would need roughly 200 megabits. Okay. Um, uh, next question from Isabel. When you're using multiple cameras, can the secondary camera be normal HD cameras? So actually with the, with the multiple camera setup, we offer the X cam for that as well. So and the, the whole idea is that with the, with the cameras being sort of similar resolution, that it's, it's a seamless cutover. Because if we have different types of cameras, you know, in terms of color correction and everything else, it might not might not be as seamless as you would like. So at the moment, we're only supporting our own side cameras. So the side cameras we have, so typically you have the panoramic in the middle, and then you have the option of these side cameras. And the side cameras are only one camera. They're not four cameras. It's not a panoramic image anymore. It's more sort of just a, a zoom image. So we, we would use our own cameras for that. So, they, so the answer is yes, but it, the caveat being that you need to use the, the X cam to do that. Uh, next question, Johan. How do you sync an output stream when you use cameras? Well, I know it does it, but I'm not quite sure how. Uh, about Ivan, do you well, know how I, I do. Um, within RTSP, there is a, uh, a timestamp, RTCP, uh, that we use to, uh, to time sync all the different streams coming in from multiple cameras. Because these are all IP streams that we that come in from the different cameras. So we can use the timestamps in those cameras to, uh, to sync all the, all the different cameras together. Good answer. Uh, Jason's asking, does the system completely run on bonded cell or the components be connected by ethernet? No, so yeah, I didn't wanna give any confusion then that the encoder market and the AI tends to be a little bit separated. So it can run over ethernet, that's fine. However, if you're at a stadium and they maybe don't have any internet connectivity, we actually have uh, the data link, which is an encoder purely for IP. So it's the same sort of bonded setup, but you don't necessarily need to plug in a, an SDI camera anymore. You just plug in an IP camera or an IP stream in this case. Um, so in fact, the data link, again, if there is no we can use cellular to do that, but it, it can be, you know, as long as the stadium has ethernet, you know, internet connectivity, we can do that. And then the camera connects directly to the AI server over, over ethernet, Gigi. Yeah, you forgot one uh, question by uh, uh, Jorge. Um, as a full system, how many cameras can AI server handle and how many of those cameras can be streamed? Um, well, as if we're talking about physical cameras, then it can handle up to three cameras, the panoramic camera and then two side cams. If we're talking about the virtual cameras, then it's actually five. It can generate up to five different streams um, that you can control, like I showed you before in uh, Link Matrix. So virtual five, physical three. Um, next question. Have you looked at using it with American baseball yet? That's a good question. I think we've looked at it. We're not supporting it at the moment, though, are we, Biodivine? I think it's a case. Well, I think I think we're, we're really waiting on uh, a baseball field to set the IQ up, I guess. Um, it's not a big sport here in the Netherlands. Uh, plus, with all the lockdown measures, uh, it's impossible currently anyways. Uh, but yeah, we, uh, I, I'm confident we can, we can do baseball, uh, but we need to train the AI on it. That's yeah. basically what we need to do. Yeah. I mean, we've been looking oh, yeah. at football, which is fine. And some of the other sports, uh, cricket again is another sort of ball type sport, which it supports. Um, yeah, yeah I, I, I don't see it as a problem, but, at the, but we, obviously as bad as I mentioned, we, we just need to train the system to do that. Uh, and it's driven by opportunity. Uh, next question, Jason. Can the system be moved, for example, be placed above a multi-sport field in the fall and moved inside a, gymna a gymnasium for the winter? Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can you can move it around. Um, that, that's not a problem. I, I always sort of say that probably the hard part 
of, of implementation. The setting up and, the, and, and, and everything else, the initial configuration is relatively easy, it probably takes about an hour. Um, the harder bit is actually installing the camera. So it's finding that place where you're gonna put it because it needs to be sort of eight meters above the field of play. So if you've got a friendly lamp post or something or a wall, you just put a mount, when we supply the mount point, you just need to put the mount point on and put it up there. Um, with the X-cam, you just need to adjust the lenses manually a little bit as well. Um, and that's probably the hardest bit, but it's just finding that physical point to put the camera. But yeah, by all means, you can just move it around as, as you see necessary. It, it's totally water resistant and weatherproof, these cameras. They are designed to be outdoors for most of the year, but there's certainly nothing stopping you just bring, moving it around as you want. And we do get asked for, for mobile cameras, for a mobile setup. So as I mentioned, every time you move the camera, you do need to adjust the lenses uh, slightly just to get the, 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 the focus correct. So in our next XCAM version, which we'll probably release sort of halfway through this year at some point, we're gonna release the XCAM Pro. Um, again, our own camera. But what that will allow you to do is mechanically uh, or electronically uh, just adjust the lenses. So you, at the moment, you have to sort of unscrew them, do it manually, whereas the next version, all that will be sort of automated and done electronically, which basically means from a mobile setup, it just makes it much more easier to implement. Uh, Alan, uh, do you any pan and scan on the side cameras or are they just fixed shots? We do pan and scan on the side cameras. Of course, the pan and scan is somewhat limited because it's only a single camera. It's still a 4K, so we have some 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 room to move around. Uh, but it also depends on on what it's if it's too much zoomed in, then there's no <clears throat> no use for pan and scan, obviously. Uh, but if it's fully zoomed out, then yeah, definitely we can also do pan and scan. Yeah, because bear in mind it's a software pan and scan, you know, so it's not. Yeah. And let's go. Uh, Mark, how fast can you set a new sport like ping pong, rowing, or fencing? We already built four kits to cover Olympic disciplines in Pan American Games. Um, yeah, it's, it's just a case of training training the system really uh, for the different sports. Um, the, the length of that it, it it sort of depends really. Basically, we just feed it and train the AI uh, a lot of video and picture images. Um, it, it, yeah, it's probably months, uh, a couple of months, because um, we have to go through the testing and then implementing it. But it, it, it's, it's relatively quick. And, and, and whether or not we do it, obviously, there just needs to be a business kind business case behind for doing that. Um, but, you know, we, we're always looking at uh, new sports and new opportunities. So, you know, what, what I would say, Matthias, is, you know, take that take that question offline and, and let's let's discuss it. But it's you know, it's, 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 if there's a business case for doing it, then of course, you know, we, you know, we'd certainly like to discuss that. Uh, next question from Carol. Um, I understand this presentation is for sports, but would this work well for performance as well, such as plays or concerts or church services? Actually, Carol, that, that is a great question. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with the IBC Accelerate program. We did something last year um, and, it's, and it's a platform where it, it's not for finished products, it's more of a sort of a proof of concept or an idea. And, and the interesting thing with the, the panoramic camera is that like in a church or a concert or even a round table panel discussion, it's having one camera with the X cam and then being able to use almost like a, a, a virtual cutout to decide who's talking and who's doing what. So again, you don't need multiple cameras. Again, it's a, a low cost production. And actually what we did as part of the IBC is that we live streamed a, a, a music concert. So we had a musician on the stage um, and, and she had sort of a, a, an accomplice on the guitar. And the idea is using the X-Cam, the panoramic view to do that. And in fact, it was, it, it was the first uh, live stream using AI over 5G from a boat in the middle of Amsterdam. And it sort of worked quite well, however, I, I sort of caution you, it was just, um, um, it, it's kind of something from an R&D perspective, it's not a product that we're looking at. But we're certainly interested in looking at more of these type of innovations as the year goes on. So what I would say, sort of watch this space. And again, Carol, if there's particular opportunities that you want to talk to us about, um, then by all means, get in touch uh, and we'll be happy to discuss them. By the way, our email is sales 
at mobileviewpoint.com. But what we will do, we're recording this, um, this uh, webinar. And so what we can do is share the link with you. Uh, so we'll follow up. And if anyone has got questions, opportunities, uh, projects, uh, potential projects or otherwise, and they'd like to discuss that with us, then we'd be very happy to hear from you. Um, the other thing I will also mention is that on under YouTube, Mobile Viewpoint has a channel. Uh, we call it uh, Sport Local. And there you will find lots of different examples of the IQSP in action for lots of different sports. And in fact, that's all done with the Hikvision camera. The X-Cam for us is a, a relatively new invention. So until a few months ago, it was just, just using the, the sort of the lower quality Hikvision camera. But I hope you'll agree that actually the quality is pretty good, even with those cameras. But the idea is to take the whole thing to the next level using the X-Cam. Um, but yeah, and if you can't find that link, again, just get in contact with us and I'll be happy to share those YouTube links. And on there, we've got everything from cycling, the horsing and all the different, horsing, I'm not sure that's a thing, but the horse jumping uh, and all the different ball games that we're supporting as well. So I think, is that all I the I see questions? there's one more question okay. in the chat. Um, can those individual camera positions be used in replays? I'm going to assume these are the virtual camera positions. Um, no, what is used in a replay is what was broadcast. So you cannot choose a different camera for that position. It, it is an interesting thought though, because usually with uh, when somebody scores a goal, you'll first see it again as you saw it the first time, and then you might see a replay from a different angle. But I'm not sure if that will really work well with the virtual cameras. If we had a side cam, then obviously that would provide much more interesting pictures. So it's well, something to look out for. Yeah, but I guess, I guess bad advice what we can do, because we're collecting the whole panoramic and we record that. So if you want to take, a, um, say there was an argument with the referee further down the pitch that the AI missed, you could then basically go back to that using the link matrix and then create a virtual cutout of that recording. Oh yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. So you can, so, so maybe not replays, but you can certainly recreate situations. Anything that happened on the panoramic view, you can recreate after the event in any case. So it's there, it's saved. So we, we don't lose anything. Great. Well, that's all the questions. Um, I'm hoping everyone found it enlightening. Uh, like I mentioned, if you've got projects, anything, please get in touch, we'll be happy to help. Um, and on that note, I'd like to thank Baudivine, first of all, for joining me this afternoon and helping me with this webinar. Um, for all of you guys out there for joining us this afternoon, we very much appreciate your time. Um, and until next time, please stay safe. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thank you.